What's up? I'm Jake Codeweiss with Musician on a Mission, and in this video, you're gonna learn my top 15 mixing tips and tricks for mixing drums. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video because as usual, I've got a free bonus for you. Let's jump right in. We're not gonna go deep on anything here. We're gonna keep it pretty quick. I'm gonna start with some more basic tips and we're gonna get more and more advanced as we progress. Tip number one, use buses. Organization can help you simplify the mixing process. If you have multiple kick drum mics, route them to a single bus so you can apply processing to the kick sound as a whole rather than all the separate mics individually. You do the same thing for the snare. Bust the top and the bottom mics together to make it easier to process. As a further example, you can bust toms together, create a cymbal bus that holds your hi-hats, close mic cymbals, and overheads, and it can be helpful to create an overall drum bus for the entire kit. Tip number two is check the phase. When using multiple mics to capture a single source, you can run into phase issues that can make your drum sound thin and less full. So it's important to check that everything is aligned. If not, you'll need to make some timing adjustments as needed. For example, the peaks and dips of the waveforms for your different snare mics should all line up. If they don't, you can just nudge them forward or backward on the timeline until they do. You wanna do that for any drum that was captured with multiple mics, then you can align everything with the overheads. You do not have to align the room mics. They're used to intentionally create a perception of depth, so the waveform overall will just naturally sit further back on the timeline. That's totally normal. Tip number three, isolate for control. Mic bleed from the other pieces of the kit can make it difficult to really hone in and do any kind of processing on a specific drum. So noise gates are your friend. Use these on things like kicks, snares, toms to reduce or eliminate unwanted cymbal bleed. For example, I used a noise gate on the toms to clear out the bleed from the rest of the kit. This is especially noticeable in the low end. Tip number four, don't be afraid of samples. Layering in samples and using drum replacement are quick and easy ways to get some awesome drum tones. If the raw tracks just aren't cutting it, try drum replacement. This is a great way to quickly get a polished and professional sound. For example, listen to how much more polished these raw drum tracks sound when we replace the shells with samples. For drum replacement software, I like Steven Slate Drums Trigger 2. You can also check out Drumagog, Addictive Trigger, and Superior Drummer, all great options. Tip number five, use filters for tightness. I like to cut any unnecessary low end from everything but the kick just to clear up the space and make things a little bit tighter. You can usually get pretty aggressive with the cymbals, and for room mics, I like to cut both the lows and the highs if the cymbals are a little bit too bright. Tip number six, use multiple references. When I'm sculpting my drum tones, I usually have one reference track as my main comparison, and then two to four additional references to remind me that I don't have to copy my reference tracks exactly. If you try to copy things exactly, you'll always end up disappointed because there are just too many factors to consider when it comes to music production. A billion decisions are made throughout the process, so using multiple references is a way to remind you that you don't have to copy. You just have to get things within a margin where it won't sound out of place in a playlist next to other professional releases. Tip number seven, think big picture. Be careful not to get too sucked into how things sound in solo. This could cause you to rabbit hole on minor details, lose sight of the big picture, and lose momentum. Instead, spend more time processing your drums in context. Ask yourself, how do the drums relate to the other instruments in the mix? Can everything be heard clearly? Are they punching through the arrangement? Do you need to address any frequency masking? Mixing is all about relationships, so keep that in mind and avoid the solo button as much as you can. Tip number eight, have a workflow. It's super helpful to have a consistent approach to mixing drums. The thought process I go through is the same every single time. Organize your tracks, get an initial balance with just faders and panning, check the phase, 
go down the line track by track, process the drum bus, and you're done. And just a quick tip for you, as I'm going through each track, I like to think about the following things. First, does the track need isolation, layering, or replacement? Second, how's the tone? Do I need to use EQ to fix or enhance anything? Third, how are the dynamics? Do I need to control anything or increase punch or sustain with compression? And fourth, how's the space? Does this track need any wet effects to make it sound larger than life? So I think about those four key qualities for each track one at a time, make necessary adjustments and move on to the next. Tip number nine, slow compression for punch. This one's pretty simple. Use compression with a slow attack to make drums hit harder. It's not uncommon for me to use pretty aggressive ratios and gain reduction to get the amount of punch I want. For example, notice how much punchier this snare sounds with some slow attack compression. Tip number 10, smash the room mics. Aggressive, fast compression on the room mics can really help create this bigger, thicker type of sound. For example, notice the effect this can have on the sound of the kit as a whole. Tip number 11, add character. Your basic tools like EQ, compression, and reverb is all you really need to mix drums, but you can also use different forms of saturation to sculpt the tone. Plugins that emulate preamps, consoles, and tape can help make things sound a little thicker and fuller. For example, listen to what some console and tape saturation on the drum bus does for the sound. Now again, I just want to remind you that I would consider these kind of plugins to be the icing on the cake with 90% of the work being done by the basic tools, EQ, compression, reverb. Tip number 12, parallel compression. This is another technique you can use to get a thicker, fatter sounding drum kit overall. You send the drum bus to an aux track with aggressive compression settings, fast attack, fast release, and you blend it in to create some more excitement and thickness. Tip number 13, use limiting for control. You can use a limiter to just tame the very loudest peaks of the signal. And you can do this on either your individual tracks or your drum bus or both. And that way you're not in danger of any stray drum hits spiking the volume. For example, in this mix, I've got a limiter on the drum bus. When the limiter is active, notice how the signal never goes above a certain point. Tip number 14, use clipping for aggression. If I'm working on something that calls for some really aggressive drums, like rock or hardcore or metal, I'll use a clipper at the end of the plugin chain on the individual tracks to help sculpt the tone a little bit. A clipper is like a limiter, but instead of squashing the loudest parts of the signal, it completely shaves it off. It's got a very specific tone and character, adds a little bit of distortion to give it some bite and also controls the peak volume. For example, listen to the difference it makes on the kick. Now on the snare.
and on the drum bus as a whole. Now, every engineer is different. You'll have to decide for yourself whether a clipper is gonna give you the sound you're looking for, but I think it's worth experimenting with. Tip number 15, use reverb for size. Now, if you want that really epic kind of drum sound, try adding some reverb to the snare and the toms. For example, notice how much bigger the drums sound with some reverb on the snare. Now, I personally like chamber reverb for drums, but you can really use any kind you like. Something with a shorter decay, like a room or a short plate would be fine. A quick tip for you, use the pre-delay to separate the effect from the dry signal a little bit. And this can really just help keep the drum from sounding too distant. For example, without and with pre-delay. Also, be careful adding reverb to the kick drum. It can be easy to overdo it and muddy up the mix, which is why I usually just keep it to the snare and the toms. That's usually enough to get the job done. So there you have it, my 15 top tips for mixing drums. These are just a few tips and tricks I hope you will find helpful. But if you wanna know more about how you can make music that sounds professional, grow your audience, start making an income with music, join me for a free workshop I put together where you're gonna learn the six transformations you need to go through in order to make music your full-time source of income. It's completely free, just follow the link in the description. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.